On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, a big matchup tonight between the Lakers and the 76ers as they begin a seven-game homestand. And with that, a matchup between Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis. How will this fare in terms of the one-on-one performance tonight? We'll dive it all, dive all into it next, right here at Locked On 76ers. You are locked on 76ers. Your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and in lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. What's good, D? The weekend is good, Keith. <laughs> that's what's good. What's the weekend? I don't even know what's that. The, the singing group you talking about? That, that's oh, the, uh, that's the, the about guy you talking artists. about? Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the artist, because I don't know anything about a weekend. I don't Very know true. Because yeah, we do have Sixers basketball on Sunday also. So <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be a busy weekend, man. Saturday is like the only day that uh, we get to really kind of take it take it back a little bit. Got, yeah. I got a busy one on Sunday, too. So, yeah, Eagles early pregame and then Sixers later on that night. So there you go. Well, such is the life, and I'm not complaining. Welcome, everybody, to Locked On 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from... 97 Father Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner, Keith Pompey, from TheInquire.com. And, of course, the great beat writer and six beat writer that he is. Uh, we're with you here, and we thank you all for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On 76 is, is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube at Locked On 76 ers Well, Keith, we got a big matchup tonight. Uh, prime time. The Los Angeles Lakers in town as the 76ers host the Lakers, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, to start off their seven-game homestand, which is a season-long homestand, and an opportunity, as we talked about on the previous podcast, for them to right the ship a bit and get back on track. Uh, But whenever these matchups come up, we talk about key matchups in games all the time. We'll, We'll talk about Davis and Embiid. We'll get into also something a little interesting as we uh, talk about Shake Milton and his possible value around the NBA in the event that the Sixers need to make a move to improve their roster. And later on, we'll get into our, our keys to the game. But oftentimes when we talk about keys to the games, Keith, and we look at certain teams, certain star players, we look at matchups. And one thing that Joel Embiid does have is while there are not a plethora of huge big men names that are on his level in the NBA, one of them is Anthony Davis. There are a few of them that his eyes light up when they get ready to line up and and jump center on on those particular nights. And again, one of them is Anthony Davis, whether it was with the Pelicans as he was trying to make a name for himself. Self, Davis already a a known commodity in the league, even though they were both young and are both still relatively young, just getting into their 30s. But he is one that they have been compared with one another of who is the best player, Davis or Embiid. They're both very versatile. They're both two-way players. They can both shoot from the perimeter. They can both destroy you on the low block. Defensively, they they are both very, very strong on that end of the floor where Davis has won already a defensive player of the year, and Embiid has not. Uh, But these two really get up for each other, and Embiid normally gets the best of Davis. I lean more towards Embiid in this matchup at, at player for player. I don't know where you are. And I know where a lot of Sixer fans are, but your thoughts on this matchup, because this is one that I'm going to keep my eye on tonight, especially with the tear that Davis has been on as of late. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think it's unfair for Davis. I mean, because when we look at him, you know, I mean, I I hear everything that you're saying and I hear what people say, you know, but he's not a center in my eyes. He's a power forward. You know, he's. Yeah, but in today's game, he's a center. Yeah, but he ain't the center, dude. I mean, like, in like, I mean, put it this way: when they won the chip, he was playing the fault the four. When they were really good, you know, because it, I mean, he's, you know, it in today's game. But when you look at him, like, I don't put him in the same category as 
the Joker and Embiid. Like, right then and there, they're the two best centers in the league. They are. Flip a coin. You know, Anthony Davis is as good as he is and as athletic as he is, he can't guard either one. You know, he's more of a, you know, an athletic guy who, you know, who grew in high school and, and, and extremely athletic, but he's more of a four. And that's the difference. Like, you look at Embiid. Embiid is athletic for someone to be seven foot two, listed at 280. He's probably over 300. Not not a knock to say he's fat or anything like that. Just a big dude. And when you put that girth up against Anthony Davis, he's going to like boom, 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 back up, fall down, crumble, whatever. He just can't, he can't handle that. He just can't. So as much as we all say like he is a center, he can't guard Embiid. He just can't. Embiid's too big for him. And and the good thing about him now, like let's say if he had protection, if they had a quality center, and then he would go up against the four, on the four, you know, he would get buckets left and right. But when he has to go up against Embiid, Embiid's just too big. And I get what you say, today's NBA, but you and I both know he ain't a center. It's just that out of necessity. You know what I mean? Right now, let's just put him out there. The team is, I ain't going to call him trash, but, you know, <laughs> but they were trash at the beginning of the season. And then they just start letting them loose. Now, here's the thing. Him dogging Chris Topps, Persingas, and all these other dudes. Come on, bro. That's completely different than dogging Embiid. But do you consider Chris Topps, Persingas the same? No. No. I seven, consider him a four, seven, two. Three, seven, four. Yeah, but, you know, seven, three, seven, four. That's just like saying, do you do you consider Kevin Durant a center? He's seven, a seven footer. You know what I mean? They might play power forward in lineups, but no, I don't. I, I, I don't. I'm See, my, my, my thing is, like, you may be listed as a center, but if you out there roaming the perimeter the whole game and doing that other stuff, are you really a center? Or do you just have, you know, just five dudes out there? You, well, you know what I'm saying? And be both Embiid and, and uh, Jokic roam the perimeter and operate a lot of their they, offense from the perimeter. They do. but and they are traditional centers. They they, they do. The Jokic does. But I, I look at Jokic as – how do I say it? I, I look at Jokic as a point center. I look at Embiid as a center who wants to be a guard at times. You know what I mean? Like he tries to do stuff. He wants to face up. He wants to do all these other things. You know, I, I look at uh, uh, Nurkic as a center. You know, mm-hmm. I, I look at the guy in Phoenix as a center. Come hey. on, man. Chris Spott is kind of, as they say, light in the butt but they don't say like that, you know, that the same thing with Anthony uh, Davis. I mean, the problem is he can't stay healthy, but he's the guy that you don't want banging all the time. I look at Drummond as a center. Yeah. These other dudes, I just look at them as guys on a team where they're saying, let's just get the best five out here. We don't have anybody else. So Chris Pops, you got to play the five. But if you notice, he like the first game against the Sixers, it, it took him a while to take advantage of the mismatches because he was too busy shooting jumpers. Mm-hmm. And then the second game, it's like, look, dude, Embiid's not playing. <laughs> Just drive the lane. No one's going to hack you. So to me, they're, he's a power forward. He's a power forward. I'm sorry. Like, he, he's a three-point, seven-foot-three, three-point shooter. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, when Anthony Davis came into the league, he was absolutely a power forward. And he was. And he thrived. He, he made himself an all-star. He became one of the best players in the NBA as the number one overall pick out of Kentucky. He, he for sure was a, a, a power forward. But as the game evolved and the game changed, just like Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry is a guard, but is he a point guard or is he a shooting guard? He was a point guard coming out of Davidson. He can do both. But his shooting is so dynamic and so game-changing that it, it didn't matter whether he handled the ball or Draymond Green. To your point of when we basically start talking about how some of these teams have positionless players and positionless lineups that they have out there, Davis, out of how the game evolved since he has been in it, has turned into a center. Now, you can make lineups where he's a power forward on the floor with others. Is LeBron James a power forward? He might be at his best at, at, at the four instead of a three now at this stage of his career. 
And when you do that, you're going to have Thomas Bryant, who's the center on the Lakers right now. Also, um, uh, I think Damian Jones might still be there uh, as, as, a, as a five. But Davis, at, at right now, at his best, is a five that can take advantage of most fives, Keith, in the league. So even when you say Nurkic, he doesn't have to bang with Nurkic. He can just shoot over Nurkic because he's that athletic. And he can pull him away from the basket, take him off the dribble, if you will, and still uh, take advantage of a true center or even someone like Rudy Gobert, a true center. But as good a defender as he is, Anthony Davis can get the best of him. And there are quite a few others in the league that we talk about. Jared Allen is a true five. Uh, Steven Adams, who we just saw, is a true five. There are those true fives, but there are more versatile guys like that in the league uh, even Carl Anthony Towns, where they had to use him more experimentally as a five in today's game, even though he is a traditional four. So uh, it, it goes that way. But even with it, that's how it goes. And you want the ball in your in the hands of your best players. Anthony Davis is one of the best players on the Lakers. He might be the best player on the Lakers right now, uh, the way that he is playing over LeBron James. The matchup between he and Embiid, he can get the best of Embiid on the other end, and Embiid can get the best of him. And I love these types of matchups when two stars, two superstars at that go head to head. And while he hasn't played superstar level basketball in quite some time, Davis, right now, the stretches he is on where he's double doubling in his 30s, hitting 30s and nights for consecutive games, he's playing superstar basketball right now uh, against uh, Joel Embiid tonight. So I'm looking forward to this matchup. I still give the edge to Embiid. But the last time Davis did play here in Philadelphia, he gave them a nice 30 piece uh, in their loss to the Sixers. So it should be an intriguing matchup. And we'll see how Darvin Ham, the first year coach of the Lakers, runs that line about there tonight. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, because um, that Thomas Bryant part to what you're saying is interesting. Do you want to let him bang with Embiid and pick up some fouls where you don't have to put Anthony Davis? in that situation, in that position to pick up any cheap fouls? Or would you let Davis just go out there and, and be a smart basketball player and try not to draw any of those, you know, fouls that Embiid is very prone to getting for the opposition? Curious. I'm very curious. I mean, I don't know, dude. I think I'd rather have Thomas Bryant banging with him. But at the same time, you might. I mean, you because, might. you know, you look at it right now, I'm looking at the starting lineup. They don't even have Oh, this is crazy. Like they they don't even have uh LeBron. <laughs> they don't even have LeBron and A D listed as projected starters. Well, I think they missed oh. their last game. Both yeah, of them. The last out. Game. Yeah, so, they were out for their last game, both of them. But I would suspect for the Sixers national TV, they'll be ready. They'll be back. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Like the thing is though, MB could trick you. Like, if MB doesn't want to bang, then, of course, I have AD. You know, turn into a three-point shooting contest from the perimeter. Uh, mid-range, mid-range. From mid-range. But, but you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I'm looking at this lineup, man. Woo. Well, they had Dennis Schroeder, Lonnie Walker, Thomas Bryant, uh, Juan Toscani, uh, whatever. Toscano. <laughs> Anderson and Austin Reeves. Hmm. Yeah. If I have my guess for tonight – if we would go with the more traditional center, I would go Bryant, Davis, James, Lonnie Walker, and uh, Patrick Beverly or Dennis Schroeder at the point guard position. That's where I would say. That's yeah. where I would say. Yep. But, hey, man, look, it, it's a good matchup, and B gets up for these games for sure against those other players on the front line that – Pose a challenge to him. But uh, one of the guys that held things down while Embiid was out, along with Harden and Maxi, was Shake Milton. We talked a lot about Shake during that time. We talked about him getting back into a groove, even coming off the bench. He had 11 points in his first game off the bench against the Houston Rockets with James Harden back. Is there value for him, though, on the trade market? Should the Sixers look to maybe improve another position off the bench? We'll talk about that next, right here on Locked On. 76ers, but first I got to talk to you about Masterclass. Masterclass is uh, is really interesting. Uh, it's a it's a great place where you can go to choose classes online uh, to better uh, work on some personal interests of your 
of yours that you want to improve on. For instance, with Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders at any time, anywhere, and at your own pace. For example, Samuel L. Jackson teaches a Masterclass on, on uh, Masterclass.com. Also, for me, that I wanted to, since I am not the greatest cook, I'll give you two examples of what I, I would like. I would have liked to do uh, a little bit earlier in my life, but I'm trying to improve on that now. And one of them is while I do ask questions to Keith Pompey uh, about writing because he's such a great writer, I have always talked about wanting to be a better writer in covering the 76ers and even doing so for uh, my uh, website for 97fatherfanatic.com. And, uh, and that is Margaret Atwood, who teaches a creative writing class. And how can I incorporate that into covering basketball? That's one. Uh, improve your writing skills from margaret uh, atwood or, or learn something like cooking food same thing another one for me that i'd like to be better at gordon ramsay the famed chef out there with over 180 classes from a range of world-class instructors that uh that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think so i would encourage you to do that feel free to build on the experience as the campaign continues overall new things you learned well, what you're excited about, you can go to Masterclass and do that because it's not necessarily necessary to sit down and consume a full class overall, though, uh, to start to finish from start to finish. You can share those insights from individual lessons or what you were able to learn in the 10 minutes is great, too. And uh, that for me, uh, like I just explained to you, Gordon Ramsay uh, teaching how to cook and Margaret Atwood with the creative writing. So I highly recommend you check it out this holiday. Give the perfect gift of an annual Masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash locked on today. That's masterclass.com slash locked on. Terms apply. I want to also tell you about LinkedIn. These jobs today, every day, new potential hires can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And these jobs are very valuable that you are trying to give to someone. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. If I'm doing so, like I'm trying to explain to you, I'm going to LinkedIn because I want to make sure that I find the best possible candidates in the business that I am running. And for me and for you, as you add your job, use the purple hashtag hiring. All right. Purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. So just go up there, purple hashtag frame there. Boom. You got it done. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hires. Why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates mm -hmm. you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today for the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, that's available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. Shake Milton, who is a key reserve for the Sixers now after his performance with uh, three main players out in your starting lineup, Maxi Harden and Embiid, is now coming off the pine again, but expected to get good minutes for Doc Rivers off the bench. 11 points in game one against the Houston Rockets and that lost on Monday, uh, but he is back in that normal role. He was able to still take a good amount of shots, good volume of shots for the Sixers off the bench subbing in for both the anthony melton and or james harden keith when you look at him right now as we get closer to the number one december 15th keith as today is december 9th we have to remember december 15th is when a lot of things really open up in the nba in terms of trades because of free agents that sign in the off season you're not eligible to be traded until the 5th 15th of december these things the talks start to really pick up around the nba up to the trade deadline uh, of who could be moved, who's going to be the first one uh, to make a, a move and decide to trade a player 
And maybe Shake Milton, based on his performance, Keith, has opened the eyes of some of the other teams out there, maybe teams that are not necessarily playoff teams, but the ones that are, and feel like, hey, maybe we can use Shake Milton in a different role here in our club. Let's take a call. Let's make a call to the Sixers, Daryl Morey, Elton Brand, see what his availability may be. Do you believe that there's a, some value out there for him based on how he played over the last month? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you know, I, I think that, you know, let's let's not forget that Shake Milton was one of the guys who the Sixers were shopping this summer. And, you know, like really it didn't get a lot of bites on any of him or several of the other guys like the way that they wanted to. So you look at Shake right now and teams are looking at him and they can say like, hey, we can lose Shake as a chip to bring in somebody else. Not to say that they are trying to do that, but they can do that. Um, you know, Shake Milton, you know, here's a guy that's in the final year of his deal. And, you know, the Sixers have a hard choice of do we bring him back or or do we just let him walk in the offseason and become a free agent? Or do we try to flip him for someone else who we can get and that we would really like to stay, you know, an upgrade? And I feel like Shake is the type of player that, you know, his value has gone up. I shouldn't say I feel his trade value has definitely gone up. So, yeah, I mean, he's someone that they could package in. Like, let's just say they make a trade for Matisse. You say, okay, I give you Matisse and Shake Milton. I give you an elite defender and I give you a scorer who can be a backup point guard. And people say, okay, that sounds pretty good. You know, so, yes, I, I would have to say that Shake Milton's stock has elevated um, ba uh, after uh, based on the way he's played you know, with Harden and Maxi being out. Well, I would be curious to see what type of player you would get back for him. I would still think it's a, another reserve player, but in the Sixers place that they're in, would it be another guard or would it be a wing? Uh, I'd be very curious to find out what that player would be. Um, oftentimes when you, you've looked at the Sixers in the past, when they would develop players, you felt like the development wasn't really happening for players you thought were talented. Shake is talented. Uh, is there a group out there? Is there a club out there that thinks that they can do a little bit more with Shake, get more out of him, and they, he could be more beneficial to their team than he is here? But uh, once Maxi comes back, we'll see where he fits in. And, and as we know, we talked about Maxi's probable return later in the month on the last podcast. I would like to see him stick around a little bit more to see how, again, he gets used to, comfortable coming off the bench again. And if his if his volume as a uh, bench scorer and a ball handler for Doc Rivers' team uh, will be there for for this group, so it's going to be interesting to see. But uh, again, this whole the, the 15th is is one to keep an eye on because you as you know, Keith, we're going to start to hear a lot of stuff, not just here but around the league of uh, players, uh, teams talking uh, and this player's name coming up in any type of discussion. So. I wouldn't be surprised if Milton's name is one of those that, that pops up at some point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, man. Well, it's that time tonight. Lakers, six or seven thirty start time, nationally televised game here in Philadelphia. We need to get to the keys to the game. We'll do that next right here on Locked On 76ers. Before we get to the keys of the game, let's talk about bet online, right? Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at Bet Online. If you love sports podcasts, you'll find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest, easiest way to get your betting fits. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Do it today, folks. Do it today. All right. Today we have the Lakers and the Sixers. Lakers come in with a 10 and 14 record. They're six and four in their last 10, turning things up as we talked about. 10 and 14 overall, still at the bottom of the West because the West is so good, they're so deep. And um their last game was played on Wednesday where they lost to the Toronto Raptors by thir by 13, 126, 113, Keith. And as you already mentioned, no LeBron James, no Anthony Davis. They are currently on a road trip right now that um, 
is uh, still ongoing. Uh, a five, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, a six game road trip. Game five is the Sixers. Game six will be the Pistons on Sunday. Um, this team started off poorly, as you mentioned, uh, but they have since turned things around. Your thoughts uh, on this game? What are your keys to this one tonight? And I'll, I'll follow you with mine. I mean, I think it's simple for them, for the Sixers. I mean, they got to have that ball has to move. You can't play hero ball. You can't, you know, be stagnant with the ball. The ball has to move. Everyone is a touch. But at the same time, I think they need, you know, they also need, and this sounds might sound crazy by saying this, but you, because I'm saying the ball needs to move. But at the end, it needs to end up with Joel Embiid in late in the game taking over and dominating. Because as we talked about, he has an advantage on Anthony Davis. So you need to take advantage of that. But at the same time, we can't have people that are in the perimeter over dribbling and not looking at Joel or not looking at other people. Defensively, they're going to have to get back in transition. They're also going to have to box out. Because this is something that the Sixers have been getting destroyed in recently on the defensive end and, and also rebounding. So to me, ball movement, defensive rebounding especially, and 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 then getting back on transition D are the three things I think the Sixers need to do to win this game. Yeah, and um, LeBron James and Anthony Davis last played on Tuesday against Cleveland in their loss to the Cavaliers. Davis left in the first quarter very early, dealing with flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. LeBron played, but they both uh, missed the game on Wednesday, which would have been you know, the second night of a back-to-back -back against the Toronto Raptors and uh, gearing up for the Sixers' nationally televised game, naturally. So they'll be ready to go. Um, I, I think that number one, like we always talk about, is the execution of the game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, go out there and execute, and we won't really have to worry about turnovers as much and use that as a key to the game either. But I think execution is still key against this team. Uh, basically, you have those two as defenders, Patrick Beverly uh, to an extent, and, and then you have everybody else that are just role players, and, and I wouldn't look at them as defensive stoppers on the Lakers team. So you should got to be able to take advantage of your matchups uh, in general. So execution, ball movement finding the open man and, and trying to your best to get the easiest shot, I, I think is key. And part of that is James Harden and the uh, the uh, dribbling uh, exhibition that he likes to put on, which sometimes is not necessary. Uh, can, he, can he keep that to a minimum in, in a game like tonight? He's great at passing. His vision is crazy. And if he can, again, limit some of that stuff, and I know it gets him going, but sometimes it gets the other team going too because you you eventually – turn the rock over and then you're going the other way and it's uh, an, a, a mismatch in terms of numbers on the other end and the Sixers are at a disadvantage. So execution on the offensive end, uh, smart play by your point guard against this team and also make sure that you do, in fact, defend the other end of the floor. Just defend the other end of the floor. Make it very difficult on them where James and, and Davis – don't really get things going uh, mm -hmm. against you tonight. So I think it's imperative that they do all three of those things and focus uh, on the offensive end and the defensive end as a whole and, and, and trying to execute one way and execute defensively too. talk, communicate, make sure some of this stuff doesn't get in the way uh, tonight against the Los Angeles Lakers, because it could be a long, it could be a long one, long night. And uh, I, I hope that's not the case for the Sixers that they come home for the seven. And I know they're basically generic things that I just gave you. But sometimes with this team, it's about simplicity to help them win, right? Rebounding, effort, energy, turning the ball over, execution. That's what it is. And I think that's what's important for, for this team to beat the Lakers tonight as they start this homestand. I agree. I All agree. right, man. Well, listen, we appreciate Everybody hanging out with us all week. Thank you for making Locked On 76 as your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast for the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. That's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Keith, do you mind letting the good folks know where they can find us? 
Well, tonight, people can find you on the Divine Giving Show from 6 p.m. to midnight, right? So you yeah. guys can find D there on, on 97.5 FM from 6 p.m. to midnight. Um, you can also follow my man on Twitter at Divine G. That's D-O-V-O-N-G-975, right? You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. And you can uh, read my articles in theinquire.com. Make sure you do that on Saturday uh, morning when you wake up and you're getting your coffee before you go out there holiday shopping. Make sure you go to theinquire.com and read Keith's stories on what took place the night before. And, of course, getting ready for the next day uh, on Sunday for game two of the homestand. Keith, thanks, man, all week. Really appreciate it. Good to have you back home. At least you get the rest at home for a little bit now yeah i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to it <laughs> i know you are i know you are all right thanks man thanks everybody out there have a great weekend enjoy the Sixers games all right all right peace y'all peace <laughs>